So modifiers is important. Um, there's some other things in here, but really let's jump into alphas. And there's one thing I really want to get in and start to explain. Now again, alphas, it's really just the shape of the brush. But there's a lot of really important usage to this. A lot of stuff has come with this alpha 58. You'll see this used quite frequently. And um, let's put that off. Let me see if I can find it. Anybody knows where the skin brush is? Give me a shout out. But it should be in standard. If not, I'm just going to create it myself. So, patterns. Of course it's in patterns. I instantly think of patterns when I say skin. All right. Watch this. All right, that does not do it justice. Okay, let me make sure that this records and screens to you. That is really awesome skin, quick skin, mind you. You know, there's a lot more that can be done to to make that work. But for quick detailing, that's really cool. And what is it? Standard brush, dot stroke, the curve is not special, depth is special. Notice that that's just a modification of that sphere brush basically. You go into samples, you know, nothing major, sample radius 0.5. It's using fast, but I doubt that would make a difference. There's no preserving or stabilizing. Um, whoops. And I just modified that, so let's set that back. I gotta reload it. Okay. And so no brush modifier to speak of, no tilt or anything else. In and of itself, it's just doing pretty awesome. Um, let's go in one direction. should have orientation on. Chicken, it has roll on. And that's what it's using. So let's dissect this brush a little bit. See if we understand things. So we saw curve is the same. Depth is very important, okay? Let's set depth to zero. You can get somewhere. But what you'll notice, in fact, let me ask you guys if you notice, what's different between those two strokes, those two different types? What's different between using embed and having that embed set at zero? One, the high details get pushed up, yeah? So there's more relief in the actual sculpt itself. But that relief also becomes noise as these polygons, right here specifically actually, as those polygons get pushed too far, they're just not able to, con they, get, they go left, they go right, they go left, they go right, and then by the end of it, it's just noise. It doesn't mean anything. And that happens because the, the standard brush just pushed them too far. 
This, on the other hand, just got richer. It got cleaner. So you could see depth in this particular case as keeping, um, how do I say it? It kind of tunes out some of the noise, which is really nice. So that's one difference. And then the other difference is roll. So there we go. Come in here, turn roll off. Well, it looks pretty bad, right? <laughs> Definitely doesn't look like skin. So what I what I find really cool, because this brush I'm pretty sure was uh, Pixelator made this one, uh, was that just by turning roll on. He had the brush, number one what roll does is roll will take whatever your alpha is and it just repeats that alpha. Instead of taking that alpha and dragging it through, it just repeats it. And so that means that this was able to repeat and then it would orientate itself this way and this way and this way and this way. It's pretty nice and it created enough randomization. But you could go a step further and you could turn on this orientation and just set your spin rate at say 0.5. You can see how it spins around. And I'm creating some awful patterning here, but it's got some nice form to it. And if I'm to just kind of brush back and forth as opposed to a circle like I was doing, and maybe up and down, I'm actually starting to imitate what skin does. And I'm starting to develop some of that patterning. Now, you have to really get in and explore skin. But because I've increased my draw size, you can see a little bit more of that. Yeah, dermatologist time for sure. Anyways, the skin brush using roll, adding a little bit of spin, having that depth in there to kind of cut out some of the noise, makes pretty good use of that alpha. So it's not just arrows, but it's its alpha. Now this alpha is right here, it's alpha 57. I can do a similar thing as this brush. I'm going to make my own right now. I'm going to go into the standard brush. And I'm going to make my own entirely. So I'm going to come in and say, clone the standard brush. And so now I have my own standard brush. It's not saved yet. Where is it? It's two standards. Got to be careful of that. Their names are the same. Oh, no, there we go. It updated. Thank you. Standard one. And instead of selecting this alpha 57, I'm going to select alpha 58. Okay, that stroke's not really what I want. Let's try roll. It's a little cleaner of a stroke. I want to use Z sub. I'm going to lower that Z intensity so it's not so dramatic. And now I want to put a little twist in there, or a little bit of spin. It's affecting the intensity. Oh, it's horrible. Let's see, let's turn roll off. Yeah, it's not going to work. 
but that's not a problem because now I'll try spray stroke. If you've seen David Krenz, he has a he has what he calls a wrinkle roller brush, which is quite literally standard brush, this alpha, and then he comes to the alpha palette and he blurs the heck out of it. Let me undo this. And what that allows him to do is in dragons, not dragons, but dinosaurs, he can lower this and he can just kind of sketch out wrinkles or skin folds. Maybe it's not blurred so much. Let's hit it to five. Yeah, there you go. So this is a nice way to get in and kind of sketch out a wrinkle and make use of all of these uh, settings kind of coming together. Let me check questions here real quick. Uh, Vincent, yeah, cross-hatching that way is great. Uh, Giannis, uh, spin makes the brush follow the stroke direction. No, I can explain it cl more clearly. Here's my stroke. What spin does is it takes whatever my alpha is, let's say it's a, a line, and then it just spins that line as it goes along the stroke. So it's just spinning it around the stroke's axes. Now if you need to ever, after you've been playing with these, restore the brushes, you hit reset all brushes. And that's it. And now, let's do this. Frank is suggesting we add some gravity. Can't wait until that hits stage two. I like the naturalness. You can see what gravity is doing is kind of pushing it along that Y axis, wherever that is. I think it should be the Y anyways. But I don't use this much these days. It's really, it hasn't met its, its future's not here yet. 